Hello and welcome to today's Oil for the Journey reading. I am your reader, Denise Joyner, and today's reading is being brought to you by Ignite the Truth, Bridges for Peace Bible Reading Plan. I'll be reading from uh, the New International Version, Translation of the Bible, and today's reading is 1 Samuel chapters 30 and 31, and as usual, I will read the sub headings as well. Let's begin. 1 Samuel chapter 30. David destroys the Amalekites. David and his men reach Ziklag on the third day. Now, the Amalekites had raided Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it and had taken captive the woman and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, Ahinoam and Jezre of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were taking were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. David and the 600 men with him came to Besor Valley, where some stayed behind. 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley, but David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. They found an Egyptian in a field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat, part of a cake of pressed figs and two cakes of raisins. He ate and was revived, for he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David said to him, who do you belong to? Where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of the Malachite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Negev of the Kerithites, some territory belonging to Judah, and the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag. David asked him, can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you down to them. He led David down, and there they were, scattered over the countryside, eating and drinking and reveling because of their great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them from dusk until evening of the next day, and none of them got away, except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks and er herds, and his men drove them ahead of, other, of the other livestock, saying, This is David's plunder. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow him and who were left behind at the Besor Valley. They came out to meet David and the men with him. As David and his men approached, he asked them, how are they? But all the evil men and troublemakers among David's followers said, because they did not go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and children and go. David replied, no, my brothers, you must not do that with what the Lord has given us. 
He has protected us and delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. Who will listen to what you say? The share of the man who stayed with the supplies is to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All will share alike. David made this a statute and ordinance for Israel from that day to this. When David reached Ziklag, he sent some of the plunder to the elders of Judah, who were his friends, saying, Here's a gift from you, for you from the plunder of the Lord's enemies. David sent it to those who were in Bethel, Ramoth, Negev, and Jitar, to those in Aurora, Sifmoth, Eshmolia, and Rachel, to those in the towns of the Jerahamiliites and the Kenites, to those in Horma, Borashan, Athak, and Hebron, and to those in all the other places where he and his men had roamed. 1 Samuel chapter 31, Saul takes his life. Now, the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell dead on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him critically. Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and run it through me, or these uncircumcised fellows will come and run me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer was terrified and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men died together that same day. When the Israelites along the valley and those across the Jordan saw that the Israelite army had fled and that Saul and his sons had died, they abandoned their towns and fled. And the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to, the, to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They cut off his head and stripped off his armor and they sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news in the temple of their idols and among their people. They put his armor in the temple of the Ashtoreths and fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. When the people of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their valiant men marched through the night to Beth Shan. They took down the bodies of Saul and his sons, put them from the wall of Beth Shan and went to Jabesh, where they burned them. Then they took their bones and buried them under a tamarisk, under a tamarisk tree at Jabesh, and they fasted seven days. Thank you for listening to this reading, 1 Samuel chapters 30 and 31. God bless.